welcome back to the next installment of our six series. In these series, we go through six basic routines for famous exercises that everybody likes to do every day, and I try to explain some of the techniques and some of their different ideas. Today, we're going to be talking about the stomach, the abs, or the core. Now, first and foremost, the most basic misconception, misunderstanding about your abs. If everyone wants that famous six-pack, they want to look fantastic under, under the shirt, the problem is... 70 to 80 percent of those abs are made in the kitchen. You've probably all heard that already. As many crunches as you do, as many sit-ups as you do, you're not going to be able to burn off that belly fat and see that six-pack unless you eat healthy, change your diet. I'm not going to go into that now, but basic fundamental, less sugars, less carbs, more healthy foods, whole foods, green, protein, those types of foods. Reduce your calorie intake, start working it off. Lots of information on the internet about that. Today, though, I'm going to go through some basic core and ab techniques, not only to help get that six-pack showing, but also to build that core. The core is really the foundation of the body. All the muscles build on that core, and if you don't have a strong core, as many exercises as you do in other parts of your body, it's really not going to work. So let's get to it. I'm going to go down on the mat over here. I'm going to show you some basic techniques and also go through some of the fundamental misconceptions about doing ab workouts. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about, I've mentioned this several times, is that but the stomach muscle is just like every other muscle in the body. And essentially that as you contract the muscle, you're going to be engaging the muscle fibers and that's what makes the muscle, muscle stronger and the muscle bigger. And as you extend and you relax the muscle, you give it time to rest. So this, you know, inwards, outwards, contracting and releasing motion builds the stomach muscle just like every other muscle in the body. The problem is a lot of times people are going to be using famous crunch. Now the problem is most of the time that you're in the crunch, you're not really engaging your muscle very much. You're really gonna be using the top and the bottom of the rotation to relax. So if I just do your basic crunch, right now I'm engaging, now I'm relaxing, I'm really not using it. So the only time you're really engaging your core is for a very short section as you're extending and as you're going down. So you're going to be doing tons and tons of these crunches, sit-ups, going up and down, but you're really not using good, good, good muscle. You're, you're not using good use of your time, and you're really spending a lot of energy going up and down without really engaging the muscle. So how do you engage the muscle more efficiently? So I've talked about this many times. It's called TUT, time under tension. Like all the muscles in your body, the longer those muscles are engaged, the more tension that they have, the more they'll be exerting, the more energy they'll be expending, stronger they'll be getting, and the more calories they're going to be burning. So how do we get time under tension? So your, ab, your abdominal muscles, as you know, they extend really from your solar plexus all the way down into your, where they uh, meet your, in your hips. So naturally, when you're lying on your back, and you can do this with me, when you lie on your back, naturally your back arches. I can fit my hand right underneath over here. So in order to engage those core muscles, you want to tighten your core, you want to tighten your abs. And by doing that, you squeeze down, you push your back against the floor so that you feel your lower back against the floor. If you try that, if you put your hand under your lower back, you feel an arch. So what you want to do is you want to squeeze your hand against the floor. You're going to be pivoting your hips up and pushing your back against the floor. If you just do that and do nothing else, you already feel your abs nice and tight, your core is engaged, simply by pushing against the floor. Okay, so that's the number one most fundamental technique in engaging your core, time under tension, is just get that muscle contracting and push it up against the floor. So try that, hold that for about five seconds, two, three, four, five, and then just release it. Okay, again. Tilt your hips down and push your lower back against the floor and hold that for five seconds. Okay, so now with that basic technique of keeping your back against the floor, we're gonna start building upon it and starting to get some very efficient, fantastic ab and core workouts that you're gonna be able to use throughout your workouts in between any day you wanna work on your abs, okay? So from that position, okay, raise your hands above your head as if you're reaching to the ceiling, all right? Again, constantly be aware, pay attention to your lower back, make sure it's always flush against the floor. You're gonna start burning out that core really quick, okay? Then, what you wanna do is just gently lift your shoulder blades off the floor. No big swing, no big crunch. You just wanna keep your 
back against the floor and get your shoulders off the floor, reaching to the ceiling for the count of five. Three, four, five. And come back down. Rest for a second and do that again. Shoulder blades off the floor. Two, three, four, five. And do that again. If you're a beginner, most of these exercises, I'd say you want to do between 8 and 10. Intermediate, you can go to 12 to 15. And advanced, you can do 15 to 20 repetitions. Okay, so let's try that again. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's get to 5 times. 2, 4, 5. And one more. 3, 4, 5. Okay, great. You should definitely already be feeling that. This is working a lot of your upper, your upper, upper ab abdominals over here. Okay, now we're gonna start build upon that and we're gonna go to something called the dead bug, okay? The dead bug, you're gonna be in that same position with your back against the floor, but now we're gonna pick our legs up 90 degrees, all right? So we want 90 degrees here and 90 degrees over here, okay? Now we're gonna start Actually, you know what? For this one, let's start by keeping your hands on the floor for balance until you get good at this. All right? What we want to do is just extend our legs straight out. Okay? As much as possible. When you do this naturally, your back will arch a little bit and then come back up. When you come back up, make sure you're pushing against the floor. That's the key. Go out and back up to 90 degrees. So we want to do that again. 8 to 10. 12 to 15 or 15 to 20, nice and slow. If you notice everything I'm doing is very controlled and very slow. We're not doing up and down and crunches and sit-ups. Everything is time under tension. We want to keep those abdominals engaged. All right, now we're going to do both at the same time. We're going to extend our legs out and at the same time, pull your arms behind you. Okay, we're not lifting off the floor here. We're just extending. All right, so we're gonna push our legs forward and our arms back. Count to five. I'm just showing you the techniques here, but when you do your ab workout, I want you to do the numbers I told you, eight to 10, 12 to 15, or 18 to 20. Okay, let's do one more. All right, so that is called, that is called the dead bug. Okay, we're gonna move on now. That's the basic techniques. I really want you guys to work on that, keeping your back against the floor and those very, very slow and controlled lifting techniques. Now, we're gonna to start to do some lifts. The lifts is when you're gonna do a little bit more of a dynamic motion by bringing your upper body towards your legs, which is like we were talking about before, not a crunch. We wanna focus on the time under tension. So this, something's fundamental is called the V-hold. It takes a little bit of practice to get the balance, but very basically, you wanna sit up and kind of lean back until you start to feel the, the pivot, all right? So if you just kind of keep your legs out and your hands in front of you, you'll find that kind of equilibrium, that spot where you're comfortable just to hold it, okay? So that's called a V-hold. Without doing any motion, pretty hard. Just holding it in place, okay? So then what you wanna do is you start slowly bringing your knees towards your body. Again, kind of a slow motion without a full crunch until you're able to kind of bring your knees up. Keeping your hands kind of in a neutral position. So this is a fantastic motion that engages it with a little bit more of a dynamic motion. Okay, so the next progression of that is going to be called the rock. Not a rock like a stone, but a rock like a rocking chair. Right now we've been working a lot of the upper abdominals. So because your, your abs are quite long, what we want to do is try to get a kind of a rocking motion. So again, you want to keep your legs out, your hands neutral, and start to rock back and forth. And you'll notice that as you go up and you go down, you kind of feel different parts of your abs that are working. So we're just going to do like a rocking chair. Your lower back again, as you go down, you want to make sure it's engaged, kind of flush against the floor. Try that, rock that eight to 10 times. Okay, now the next progression is a little bit more advanced. This is called the hollow rock. Basically, from that position, again, this is more advanced, so if you can't do it, just keep doing the basic one. 
is you're going to put your hands above your head. And then you can do a full body rock with your lower back and your upper back rolling and rocking against the floor. Ah, this is really great. It's, ah. Whew. <laughs> it's time under tension, full out. You're constantly engaging your core. As you're moving, you're kind of moving the tension up and down your abs. Let's try that again one more time. Do a few rocks. Do five. Two, three, four, five. That is a fantastic ab workout. Okay, next we're gonna do our lower abdominals. So far we've been doing a lot of the upper. To get the lower abdominals, you wanna work more on your legs. So there's two basic exercises you could do for your lower abs. Those are gonna be leg raises or leg flutters. So leg raise, you could either keep your hands on your side or you can put them under your lower back for support. And basically, you're just gonna lift your legs up and down without touching the floor in a quick motion. You go down and bounce back up. You're gonna do this bounce, this bounce position. Ah, that really works the lower, lower abs. As you engage them on the up and the down, same thing, get the number of reps, eight to 10, 12 to 15, 18 to 20. Okay, another variation of that would be a leg flutter. I'll put my hands under my lower back. You just want to keep your legs nice and straight and go in a quick motion. I don't know if you've ever gone scuba diving before, but it's kind of like you're pivoting from your hip, not your knees. Okay, so you just want to do this leg flutter. To make it harder, you can lift your shoulders off the ground or you can relax and leave them on the ground. The point here is to work your lower abs. Okay. So those are four kind of fundamental abs. That's really gonna get you a great workout. It's gonna be a lot harder and a lot faster getting those stomach muscles tired out rather than doing 200, 100 crunches. Trust me, it's not worth the time. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the famous plank. The plank is really more to strengthen your entire core, your entire muscle chain, going from your lower back really up into your shoulders. So we're all familiar with the basic plank. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So the basic plank, you wanna keep your body as straight as possible. Now this, you can hold out for a really, really long time. The idea of the plank is not to just sit here uh, passively, but it's to engage your core. By engaging your core, I mean contracting it like we did on our back, but you wanna contract it in your stomach. So how do you do that? Two ways, one. You want to make a stomach muscle, that feeling that someone's going to punch you in your stomach, you want to just tighten up those muscles. Tighten them up. And two, pushing your elbows backwards and your feet forward. So you're kind of like contracting your body, pulling it towards each other. So that's called a dynamic plank. As you're squeezing your elbows towards your toes and then relax. And then squeeze and relax. All right, and that is a lot harder than just staying passive as you're sitting in the plank position. Okay, now something I haven't spoken about really much yet are your obliques. Your obliques are those side muscles. Those are the muscles that connect your abs to your back, those diagonal muscles that look really nice when you can see them. So in order to get those, we need to do some rotations. Okay, so when you do the rotations, Either we could do a plank rotation, I'll show you, or a V hold with a rotation. So a plank rotation would be something like this, where you're going to rotate your body up and down, or another variation is you go up and you go through. But in any event, these are different types of rotations you can practice. Here we go up and then go down. Another variation would be called a Spider-Man plank, where you pick up your knee and you bring it towards your elbow. These are just all different ways to make a static plank dynamic. So you wanna engage your core in the plank position. So there you have it, some basic techniques. 
I think a lot more efficient and a lot more effective than doing those old time crunches and sit ups. So hope you enjoy this workout. Build them into your normal workout routine, whatever you do. If you're doing cardio exercises or weightlifting in between, try some of these techniques, work on that core, work on that abs. I'm sure it'll be great. So if you have any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do come out once a week with new workouts. Hope you enjoyed it. Look forward to seeing you next time. Oh, 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 oh,